Hey Living Water, I'm coming to you to talk about Acts 12. Um, I hope you've been doing this study with us, uh, reading every day a chapter. Um, I don't know about you, but every time I read the book of Acts, I seem to forget uh, just how full and how rich that book is. And I'm excited that I got uh, chapter 12. I want to share with you a couple of things that really stood out to me in Acts chapter 12. I used to use a phrase a long time ago quite a bit that Jesus is about a relationship. Jesus is not religion. So as I re read chapter 12 today, um, I happen to have a t-shirt on that says, Jesus is not religion. And in this chapter, that's something that really stood out to me because here you have James and you have Peter and they are living out their lives, pointing people to Jesus and into a relationship with Jesus. They encourage people to focus on him, to live their life for him, to acknowledge that he is the king, he is the Messiah. So it can't be about a religion. It has to be about a relationship. No religion existed in what they were telling everybody in the book of Acts. So that's one thing that stood out to me. The other thing that stood out to me is in the first part of the chapter is when Peter was thrown into jail. So in the very first part of the chapter, you have James and he is killed. And then they arrest Peter a little bit later. I don't know how many days, but Passover has started and they could not kill him during Passover. So he is thrown into prison. And while he's in prison, because he is this terrible criminal, they have put all these people in charge of him, all these soldiers. And I did a little bit of research into history about that. And they think there was about 16 people, 16 soldiers that were put in charge of him because he was this terrible criminal. And here he is, uh, they had four shifts of four soldiers that totally just focused on him in prison. So in the story, he's asleep. He has two right beside him. Sometimes if the criminal was very bad, the soldiers would even uh, chain themselves to the criminal. So that may have been going on at that point. Uh, Peter's asleep and all of a sudden the angel shows up and to me i think it's funny uh the angel pokes him and says hey you need to get up you need to get your clothes on and you need to get your sandals on so what does peter do he stands up and the chains fall off and he gets his clothes on and he gets his sandals on so here the soldiers are and they're blinded from what's going on um it doesn't say they are asleep uh, that wasn't their job to be asleep, um, but they don't even know what's going on. They have no idea what's going on. So the angel and Peter, they get out of there. They go by two other guards and they're out. And once the angel gets Peter to safety, the angel disappears. The thing that really struck me about this story was right before it goes into detail about Peter being arrested, it says that the church was in, uh, one translation I read said, in fervent prayer. One said the church was earnestly praying for Peter because they wanted Peter to live so he could continue to go out and he could spread the good news to everybody about Jesus. Well, they were just praying and they were just praying, and they were praying. You know what I forget sometimes? When I need something, I just need to pray about it. Now, I wanna say this, that's what that spoke to me, but this is what it, this is the whole package of it to me. When I pray, when you pray, when anybody prays, we don't change God's mind. He's God, <laughs> he knew when he created the earth, that me and you were gonna be in our homes at a stay at home order in 2020. So he is all knowing all the time. But what prayer does is get us closer to God. It 
gets our relationship with him closer. It helps our heart. And guess what? When we pray, he loves us to pray. Do you know that? He loves to hear your voice. I know that may seem crazy, but he does. I heard a pastor say this the other day, that when we pray, that can you imagine the look on God's face when we pray? His face of love and his face of, hey, they're talking to me, shh, wait just a minute. But that we're talking to him. I don't know about you, but um, during this time, um, I've struggled with a little bit of anxiety. Have you? Uh, I've talked to a lot of people that have. Uh, we're not always good at acknowledging that, but I have. I have it, uh, struggled with some anxiety. And so when I get in bed at night, um, usually I pray and I pray and I pray. And sometimes I'll just drift off to sleep. Now, some people may not like that idea of I pray till I'm sound asleep. But guess what? It's just my opinion. Smarter people than me may disagree, but I'm pretty sure, in my opinion, that God might be okay with that. You know why? Because as I'm talking to my dad, my heavenly daddy, and I'm praying at night, and I'm praying about my day, and I'm praying for the Lord um, uh, in certain situations, and I'm just... Uh, telling him thank you and thank you and thank you for all the things you're giving me and I'm healthy and I'm safe and all these things, I bet he's got that look on his face that he is so happy I'm talking to him. So if I drift off to sleep, it's okay. So I encourage you. Those are some things that spoke to me. Pray, pray, pray. Don't forget about praying. Do we forget about praying sometimes? We do. We just worry. Worry's like a rocking chair. You go back and forth and you back and forth and it doesn't get you anywhere. So pray, pray, pray. And the other thing I would say during this time, during any time in our life, Jesus is about a relationship. He is not about rules and he's not about regulations. He is about love and he's about having a relationship with us. He desires that and he loves it. And when he hears us speak to him and call on him, the look on his face has just got to be amazing. I need to remember that more often. I hope you will. So I hope you're enjoying reading through the book of Acts with us. I hope that if you have something you want us to pray with you about, you will text us that at 828-698-4664, or you will call that to the church office. We would love to pray with you. And I hope to see you very soon. And I love you guys. I miss you so much. All the time. Not gonna lie. All the time. See you soon.